Hello! Why is my microphone pointing so down instead of up? Hello! Welcome back to AFK Chat. This is our Tuesday show that will actually be going on hiatus for just a little bit for the next couple weeks. But be sure you go follow if you're watching on YouTube. Go follow the link in the description below to follow me on Amazon because we're going to keep doing some cool shows like this. But hello to the people watching on YouTube and or Amazon. This is AFK Chat, my show where I check out the kind of smaller products that I don't necessarily get to make videos on. We're going to have a little bit of fun today because we're this is kind of a repeat. We're checking out a an alternative uh, 32-ish dollar uh, budget microphone kit. This one's $30 instead of $32. Uh, and we're going to be comparing it to the one we checked out a couple weeks ago. We're going to compare it to a couple other cheaper microphones. But I've also got a couple products that arrived today that I'm going to unbox as well, which should be pretty fun. And we got some announcements towards the end of the stream and things like that. So hope everybody is having a wonderful week. Uh, for those of you who have been messaging me about the new Logitech 4K Pro webcam, uh, that's the same thing as the Brio 4K webcam, which I reviewed in the past, so nothing too crazy there, just so you're aware. But yeah, today we're going to be checking out another budget mic kit. So I queued up in the Amazon queue here the uh, products that we're going to be comparing and taking a look at at least a little bit. This is the new kit that we're looking at today, which actually looks very similar to the old kit. But this is the reason that I am testing it is you get so many of these weird, like even if you have names that you recognize, but like not super big brand name products that are super cheap on Amazon, but they and they look very similar, but they cost ever so slightly different. I, I, I want to put more effort in like I have with the capture cards into figuring out whether these are actually different products or not, as that's. A little nebulous or not certain uh, and so we're gonna be taking a look at this comparing it to the previous mic uh, kit that we reviewed last time we talked about the toner as well the one we looked at was from InnoGear so InnoGear is a name you've probably heard of they make a variety of cheaper you know audio video things on Amazon along with some other things uh, but that doesn't mean that they're not just slapping their label on a very similar microphone because that's what a lot of these companies do. So specs wise and what is included looks very similar, but they could sound completely different. And that's something very important to take a look at here. Uh, like I said, we also talked about the toner kit, which we will uh, mention because I no longer have that. But that's the one that kind of started this whole journey. We will be comparing it to the Razer Siren Mini as well. And I finally brought over the uh, Samsung Q2U for us to take a look at uh, and compare audio-wise how it sounds because that's still my going recommendation. So this mic kit we're looking at, it's going to be $30 for a full kit. And we'll take a look at what comes in it in just a moment. Uh, I have it sitting off to the side of me here. We're going to unbox it and test it out. So you get everything for $30. That doesn't mean anything included here will necessarily last a long time, but for $30, you're getting everything. Whereas the Samsung Q2U, you only really get the microphone. You get a desk stand, uh, and I don't actually have that on hand to test, but you get a desk stand, but it's not necessarily a great one. So you're getting kind of a lesser overall value for $70, bucks, but the microphone in all likelihood is significantly better, at least, you know. One would assume. We'll test and find out, and you can make that decision for yourself. We are, of course, looking at a difference of an uh, electric condenser microphone versus a dynamic microphone, so there's that involved as well. And then there is the blue snowball ice, of course, that we will be taking a look at as well. So I'm pretty stoked for today's show. I will have, like I said, a pretty big announcement about future live-streamed shows coming towards the end of the episode. So make sure you are tuned in for that because I am pretty stoked. Let me pull up the microphone itself here. So here's the box you get for your $30 for this Ikedon, Ikedon, like I said, these names are always kind of goofy, but Ikedon microphone kit. Of course, comes in a brown cardboard box like the previous one. It is a slightly different looking cardboard box. Uh, and then we take a look at what actually comes inside. Thank you for the follow over on Amazon Marv. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that Amazon link in the description and go follow on there. You'll also find links to all of the products that we are checking out today. So let me adjust my overhead camera here. I've put this off forever. There we go. That's a little better. You get a little bit of a crotch cam, but that's fine. 
Hey, thank you for the super chat, Explorographer. Much appreciated. Get the hype train rolling for today's show, as it were. Alright, so this is what you get in the box here for $30. You get... Is there no music? Uh, it did get kind of quiet all of a sudden. It's still there. Let me know if it's too loud. I must have hit the slider when I was moving stuff, my keyboard or something. I'm gonna be completely redoing my audio setup over here at some point, so that'll be possibly like a vlog or something. Alright, so this is a typical fly swatter pop filter. Uh, this is a dual layer one, so this is basically just like pantyhose, nylon, fabric. Uh, but you got one layer here, one layer here. They're not super spaced out, so like in the middle they are just kind of touching. Uh, so it's not the most effective, but it'll do the job. You want one to three inches of space between your microphone front and the pop filter. You don't want it just sitting on top of the microphone or it's not really going to do anything. Well, uh, by the way, if you're curious about pop filters, windscreens, getting the best sound from your audio, I have... Thank you for the follow over on Amazon as well, Explorographer. Uh, I will have a complete guide to getting the best quality audio for your stream and getting the best out of your microphones and stuff. I believe coming next week. I haven't actually started production on it. I've scripted it, uh, but I am super stoked for it as I think it's a very concise. It'll be a little long because of what it is, but it'll be a pretty concise, tell you everything you need to know kind of video. So I'm stoked for that. We'll explain everything you need to know about pop filters there. So get subscribed over on YouTube, but you get a pop filter. You also get a windscreen. Just as a little nugget of information, windscreens and pop filters are different things. Windscreens are a screen against wind. You know, if you're outside, wind from blowing on the mic, it'll help reduce some of those awkward sounds. They can help diffuse uh, plosives like a pop filter will. Uh, it's less effective as a pop filter than a proper pop filter setup. Uh, I wouldn't use both unless you're just like beatboxing or something because, I mean, both of them do to an, to an extent, but windscreens cut out a lot of the higher frequencies of your voice. And so, you know, if that's the sacrifice you need to make to use it, Sure, but to use both of both of them, you're getting no real benefit while actually hurting your audio, so I just wouldn't do it. But you get both options. You don't have to buy either one. You get the microphone arm itself, which is your typical cheap scissor arm. I just did a whole microphone, buyer, microphone arm buyer's guide over on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to learn more about these and why you may want one or, one or the other, this is a typical cheapo design that won't necessarily last super long or hold super heavy mics over time, uh, but it will get the job done in the meantime, especially for the microphone that's actually included in this kit. You get, uh, you get a small little desk clamp here as well. Not the best, but again, it'll do the job. This one does appear to have a slightly thinner, uh, stem here so it probably won't hold a lot of other microphone arms because usually the, the diameter of the stem is a little bit thicker. You get a shock mount for the microphone itself and this is useful for absorbing the shocks, the rumbles, your typing sounds, all of that jazz as you're, you know, recording since it basically houses it kind of in a spring here. This one's pretty locked into place though so effectiveness is that's gonna be great. You get a USB A to B cable, fairly decent looking length, and then you get the microphone itself. Again, this is an electric, electric condenser microphone. Um, so it doesn't, well, it's USB, so you don't need to worry about phantom power or anything. It's completely powered over USB. I almost want to say this is another one that's backwards. Based on what I can see under the grill here, I want to say this might be another one that's backwards so that you're supposed to put the logo facing the camera. Uh, but... Uh, we'll, we will test and find out, because we ran into that with the BM-800 we tested, it was actually backwards. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so this is the Ikedon USB condenser microphone. They never give these things model numbers, there's no model number on the mic itself, but the Amazon link is in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, even on the little user guide here. Yeah, cardio and microphone, 192 kilohertz, 24 bit. Range of 100 hertz, a frequency response of 100 hertz to 18 kilohertz. That is not great, actually. Uh, 
You're losing out on everything below 100 hertz. I don't know. I didn't look at the manual for the previous one, so I don't know what its frequency response is. But honestly, that isn't amazing. Whatever. So we're going to hook it up and check it out. So you get all this stuff in the box, which are a decent uh, starting point if, for example, uh, someone in the Amazon chat saying they're looking for a cheap mic for their kit. These kinds of kits are a decent starting point if you don't have anything at all. But even if your existing microphone breaks or something like that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend jumping into these uh, kinds of kits if you already have, say, a mic stand or a pop filter or, you know, other of these things. Because you're going to get redundant parts that aren't really useful to you. Like, this mic arm isn't going to be useful for a whole lot of other microphones other than the super lightweight one that comes with it. It's not going to hold heavy mics. It's not going to last a whole long time if you try to do too much else with it on its own. So, you got to keep that in mind. Because I think a lot of people think it's like when you get a new camera or something and you want to go with the big bundle with all the extra stuff. When in reality, if you already have a lot of this stuff, you probably just want to go ahead and upgrade to a new microphone and keep most of the other stuff that you have. I will note that this microphone, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to really show this. If my stream deck works. There's like some threading around the USB port here, which would actually allow you, if someone actually made it, a shock mount that's screwed into it, kind of like the Rode Procaster does, and sits at the bottom, which would be a lot more effective at keeping it still. However, the one that include, is included with it by the manufacturer of the microphone is just one of the typical clamp around styles. So you just slide it in here, which is fine, uh, but it's another kind of side effect of them reusing the same outside design as a million other companies because these Icodon is not I mean they're a real company but they're not like a real brand they're one of those I mean just like Innogear or newer or any of those companies for the most part they don't really make any of their own unique stuff they just rebadge stuff that don't have patents or that a lot of other companies are rebadging and just making slight tweaks to it or whatever um, so this looks very similar to the BM800 design so we'll see how it sounds uh, we're going to get everything set up here, so if we flip on over to this view, we've got the desk clamp, of course, that we slide on your desk. Just twist and clamp it on your desk right here. Slide the microphone arm in. Also, this microphone arm is incredibly short. Like, this is not going to go up over your monitors. It's barely going to get it up in your face at all. Like, this is... This is shorter than the mic reach of my low-profile mic arm I'm using on the side here for my main mic, just for, like, context. So, like I said, you're not getting quality components, but if you're just looking for something for your kid, if you're just getting into it and don't know whether you want to invest a bunch of money, or you just need something quick and easy for teaching or for conferencing or something like that, this could still be a viable option. And that is kind of the context in which we are going to evaluate it. So I'm actually going to elect to use the windscreen instead of the pop filter. Uh, well, we won't use anything yet, but when we do, we will use that because that is more space efficient for this kind of cramped setup we have going on here. Yeah, this is not working at all. Uh, what if we put it up like this and rotated the mic towards me? There we go. That kind of works. Yeah, this mic arm does not give you a whole lot of angles to work with, but none of these cheap ones will. So, worth keeping that in mind as well. Go ahead and get this bad boy plugged in, and we will start testing, and then we'll compare it to the InnoGear one that we reviewed a couple weeks ago. It, this one specifically did not come with any cable management straps or anything like that, so you will need your own little Velcro ties to tie the cable to the uh, mic arm. So the audio driver showed up as LCS USB audio, uh, which does not appear to be any of the company branding on the microphone itself. Is that an old gateway flat screen? So it's a gateway computer with the Voodoo 3. The, uh, the CRT is actually a uh, uh, silicon graphics one. Pretty neat. Alright, so we have the microphone set up here. We are going to add it to OBS Studio and get our mic scene set up here. Mic test scene. We're going to label this. We're actually going to copy, paste, duplicate. Sorry, we're going to get some text set up here. We're going to call this 
Ikidon. Which sounds like a Digimon or something. Ikidon, Digivolve into. Right, and then from here, we add an audio device source. I'll change BM800 to LCS USB audio. All right. I'm going to switch scenes and we're going to hear the microphone. Testing. Oh, testing, testing. One, two, three. Testing, testing. One, two, three. This is the Ikidon. Uh, I'm still clipping. This is the Icodon USB condenser microphone. Test, test, one, two, three. Let's go ahead and fire up. We'll get our big mic out of the far way. Let's go ahead and fire up Adobe Audition and get a sample that we can play with here. Test, test, one, two, three. I can't hear it yet, so I have no idea how it sounds. <laughs> Hopefully you're hearing it now and I'm not just talking to dead air. Uh, LCS USB audio. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. I'm going to get it a little closer for some proximity effect here. It doesn't sound backwards. We'll talk into the back of it real quick. This is talking into the back of the microphone. This is talking into the back of the microphone. Test, test. One, two. This is talking into... Yep. Yeah, definitely not backwards like the other one. Are the mics connected to a GoXLR? No, this is a USB microphone, so it can't be connected to the GoXLR. It's just connected over USB. All right, so we have our sample here in Adobe Audition. I'm going to save this. Actually, yeah, I'm going to just randomly save this somewhere as Icodon. All right, we're going to switch to... Well, hold on. <laughs> so what, what I'm going to do here is we're going to get samples with all of the cheaper microphones that we're comparing here today. And then I'm going to post-process them a little bit. And we're going to see which one is the better buy within the context of these reviews. So I'm going to pull the windscreen off of this one too, just so it's a fair comparison. So this is the InnoGear one that we reviewed and compared yesterday. Or a few shows ago. This one does actually have the screw mount shock mount uh, that is on the same bottom of the Icodon. So InnoGear decided to include the better shock mount style, whereas Icodon went with something more generic for some reason. So I am going to switch scenes. We're going to disconnect this microphone and swap to the new one.
Okay, now this is the InnoGear SM016, which was the previous $30 to $32 mic kit that we looked at in the last episode of AFK Chat that we talked about microphones. It's again the same spec of 192 kilohertz, 24 bit USB condenser, electric condenser microphone. Comes with a slightly better shock mount, but otherwise the mic arm and everything else included is the same. And no, I'm not testing the new Elgato mixer either. That also requires XLR microphones. These are all USB microphones. They don't plug into any mixer. You cannot plug in a USB microphone to a mixer or audio interface because they're already USB. They already have a built-in audio interface. Kujo's already saying it sounds a lot better. We're going to make a new file here in Audition. Inno gear. Oh, we got to change microphones for Audition. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings. It's still so boomy. Three rings for the oh. Elven Kings under the sky. Okay, yeah, it's night and day. It is night and day. It's under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. The Inner Gear, which is this sample right here. Three rings for the... Obviously, you can hear it when I'm talking. The InnoGear microphone is super muddy and uh, like low in focus, but we developed a uh, a parametric EQ preset last time. So I'm going to go ahead and add the EQ and the compressor, and this is what this microphone can sound like. Three rings for the Oven King. Actually, that still sounds kind of muddy, but this is supposedly what we liked last time. <laughs> <laughs> Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne. Still sounds significantly better than the uh, other one, but I'm going to make a tweak to that EQ. So put it back to raw parametric EQ. This still sounds really warm. I mean, you want the warmthness. Like, the warmthness is an appealing factor. Uh... Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky. But you don't want it to be Seven muddy. for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor. There we go. That's a little better. All right. So, compressor... Like, it, it's missing, it, it, it has way too much mids and is missing a little bit of clarity here. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky. Seven, but like, if you showed up for a video and sounded like this. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men versus this. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords. Like, it's night and day difference to where one person is going to assume, okay, you spent... 15 to 30 dollars on a mic kit whereas the second one is like okay you just have a decent microphone and it comes with cable straps unlike the other one so i would say <laughs> ultimately uh the winner here is the innagear out of the two 30 dollar mic kits if you're going between the ikedon and the innagear the innagear is definitely the one to go with if you're looking for something for your kid to just start out with what have you uh, but if you want to spend 20 to 30 extra dollars, let's see what that gets you with some of the competing USB microphones from some better known companies. So I'm going to, again, we're going to uh, switch scenes here and get the Razer set and Blue Snowball and stuff set up. So I'm going to flip music back on and we're going to be good to go. Thank you, Rudy and Amazon chat. Hope you have a great day.
All right, are you ready for a real microphone showdown? Do you know if I order from something from Amazon while watching you there, do you get affiliate info? So yeah, the, the Amazon queue below the stream, if you click on one of those to through the Amazon link in the description to order it, I do get affiliate cuts, correct. So yeah, anything you pick up through the Amazon stream Works out in my favor, helps support this show. So, we're, those were the microphones you can buy for 30 bucks, brand new on Amazon, that are a full mic kit. But these are gonna be some more well-known things that you can buy, um, that you can buy for similarly priced used, or by spending 20 to 30 extra dollars for a brand new version over on Amazon. So we're gonna be comparing what you just heard to the Razer Siren Mini, the Samsung Q2U, and the blue snowball slash blue snowball ice. And we're gonna see which one you all prefer there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, audition queued up here. We're gonna start with the uh, Razer Siren Mini, which is a $50, actually, how much is it right now? Yeah, $50 USB condenser microphone uh, that is a little bit more high end compared to the generic stuff, you know, that we're talking about here. But, you know. Whether it's worth the 20 extra dollars to you, especially for such a tiny little baby stand, you still have to buy like a proper mic arm if you want it up out of the way, and no shock mount at all. Is it worth the 20 extra dollars for the sound alone? Let me get, make sure everything is detected here before I go and mess something up. All right, we're gonna add audio input capture. We're gonna add one for the Q2U. Did it show up? Samsung Q2U. Perfecto. All right. All right. We're going to switch to our mic test scene here. No music. All right, now this is the blue snowball, which the text does not reflect, cause lol. There we go, blue snowball. This is the blue snowball, one of the oldest USB condenser microphones you could buy for fairly cheap. I said we were gonna start with the razor first, we're starting with the snowball first, cause that's the first one that worked in OBS. This one is $40, so 10 extra dollars on top of the microphone kit. Again, you get a pathetic little desk stand that is mostly useless. You'll still have to buy a mic arm, and there pretty much are no worthwhile shock mounts for this thing, but this thing has been around my entire YouTube career pretty much. It is an old school microphone, and you can hear how it sounds right now. We're gonna make an audition file so I can record it. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord, on the dark throne, on a, on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. I completely screwed that up, but that's fine. Oh damn! I recorded that whole sam. I recorded that whole sample with the Razer Siren Mini. You're hearing the blue snowball now. It sounds terrible, but I still want to get the sample so we can play them back, like, back to back here. Just to be fair. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Okay. Now we're going to switch to the Razor Siren Mini. Hello, hello. This is the Razer Siren Mini. This is the $50 USB condenser microphone released from everyone's favorite gaming company, Razer. 
Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. And then lastly, we're going to compare that to the Samson Q2U, which is... The only microphone we're looking at today that is actually a dynamic microphone. So, there we go. So, all the microphones we have looked at before are condenser or electric, con elec el electric, electric, that word is hard to not say electric. Uh, c they were all condenser or electric condenser microphones and not dynamic microphones. This one is a dynamic microphone, which means that it's activated by the sound of your voice rather than consistent power coming through the microphone uh, and is significantly better at rejecting background noise, but doesn't necessarily provide quite as natural of a sound. However, these are usually better for desktop broadcast environments because, and stages, because this is like a stage style microphone, because it will reject the background sound of the, you know, computer fans going on in your room, the reflections off of your monitors and off of your desks and things like that, and sound pretty solid. People are saying quiet, but my levels on OBS are, like, they're almost peaking. All right, anyway, we're going to record our sample here. Uh, new sample. You really can't trust OBS's audio levels sometimes. Three rings for the... Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Hi, I'm a professional streamer. <laughs> this is what happens when you juggle like 50 microphones at once. So. This is the Icodon kit, which doesn't sound great. It sounds super thin, sounds super tinny. This is, part of this is due to the weird frequency response uh, curve that I was talking about from the uh, manual. Uh, I seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Really doesn't sound good. Switching to the inner gear, which is our winner here. If we go back to the raw recording, kings for the oven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the dark lord. Super warm, a little muddy, but sounds great. Now, going to the Razor Siren Mini. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark... Sounds a little bit more natural than the previous two microphones. I don't know if it would be worth 20 more dollars for you, especially since you do still have to buy a microphone arm for it. Uh, so then the cost continues to scale. However, uh, it does still sound a little thin. But you can tweak that with a little post-processing. So I believe I have a Razor Siren Mini profile in here. Nope, I do not. Well, I have a full review up on my YouTube channel where I did kind of post-process it in the uh, HyperX SoloCast, which is effectively the same microphone. Sounds a little different. Uh, but there you have that. This is the Blue Snowball. Three rings for the Oven Kings under this. Just sounds terrible. There's no saving it. This is the Samsung Q2U, which is my favorite microphone recommendation for a couple reasons we'll talk about in a moment after I'm done playing my sample. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. So it doesn't sound amazing. It doesn't sound completely natural out of box, but with some post-processing, you can get a really nice sound not too far off from what I have right now out of this microphone. And this microphone provides an incredible upgrade path for you for a couple reasons. 
This is the Samsung Q2U, by the way, because it is both USB and XLR. This is super useful for a couple reasons. First and foremost, if you're new to microphones, if you're new to streaming, content creation, and the like, you can buy this. Spend you'll you'll be spending close to hundred dollars total to get the microphone and microphone arms and things like that if you don't have anything. But uh, if you already have microphone arms or something, then you can just kind of slap this on. Um, but you can then continue your upgrade path here because you can also get this used for cheaper than sixty dollars sometimes. You can start out just using it as a USB microphone, which means if you don't have audio interfaces, mixers, anything like that, you're totally fine to just plug this in on USB. You get a sound card, so you get a headphone output as well, so you can use it as your sound card and your USB mic and continue making content uh, with it as well, and it's totally solid. But from there, when you want to start stepping up your game and making you know higher quality audio or starting an upgrade chain, you have XLR, so if you want to get, say, the Elgato Wave XLR for that weird, for the virtual multi-track stuff, or the Go XLR even, if you want that for the full kitted out setup, which is a significant upgrade. But I'm just saying, if you want a mixer or an interface or something like that on top of your microphone, you have the freedom to connect your microphone to that. Whereas any of these other USB microphones that you have, they're locked into just being USB only. You can never take them anywhere else, the Amazon mics included. These don't even have headphone outs, so you can't even rig it up on its own. So you are stuck. There are no upgrade paths from here except improving your post-processing. Meanwhile, the Samsung X Q2U can grow with you, and then it, you have an upgrade path to where if you start with this and then get better mic arms and stuff and then get a XLR interface or mixer, then you can easily swap out your microphone without tossing out your whole setup. And it sounds great and is pretty solid noise rejecting in the first place. Plus, you can run the XLR and the USB at the same time. So if you do upgrade to higher quality audio gear for your streaming setup or your video recording setup, you can still, if you just end up deciding to do two PC streaming or you want just the audio monitoring built in, you can still run the USB on your streaming PC or even on the same PC to use it as the sound card or as a secondary mic output, which is incredibly powerful. Again, full review up on my YouTube channel, the Q2U from a couple years ago. Still a solid recommendation. In terms of bare sound, if we're being honest, I think the Razer Siren Mini and the uh, the Inagear mic come in top of what we have looked at today. This is the Razer Mini. Three rings for the Elven Kings. I get a little clippy here, even though I'm not clipping in Audition, uh, so some gain tweaking would work, but... Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf... With just like a little bit of EQ, and in fact, I can switch over to showing you my desktop here for a sec. If I pop into a parametric EQ, go to default, rings for the Elven King. Give it a high pass filter around 60 hertz. Give us a little boost around 123 hertz. Give it a little bit more of warmth. Do a slight mid cut and maybe a cut around this higher chunk at 3200. Let's see how the hello. See how the sounds here. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. The Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their and then slap a compressor on it. This is super rough, by the way. I would not recommend these settings just by default, but... Rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. You still got some gnarly frequencies in there to tame, but it's, like, it's usable. You could get some good sound out of it. The inner gear, again, is super muddy and warm, but is completely usable, especially if you're doing Discord or just, like, calling or meetings or whatever. Uh, but, like, I, I am impressed that even through a second wave of this testing, the inner gear microphone kit still comes out on top. Like, this was not exactly what I expected at all. So, kudos to Inagear for whatever microphone capsule they have cloned here, going with a decent one, and including the better shock mount compared to Ikidon, whatever company that is. Those mics are also bulletproof. Yeah, the Q2U. ATR 2100 is a very similar mic to the Q2U, uh, I found there to be a little bit of weird uh, sharpness or uh, 
I don't know. Uh, a little bit of weird brightness on top of worse handling noise on the ATR2100 versus the QTU in my testing. I don't even think I have the 2100 anymore, but I did test it a while back when I originally got the QTU. And I still prefer the Q2U, but they are very similar microphones in terms of all their functionality and the sound. And either one would be solid. What would you use for a live EQ? Live EQ? I use uh, a combination of the built-in uh, filters in OBS Studio for compressor and for RTX voice with uh, the re-plugs available from Reaper. They are free VST plugins. If you get a trial, you downloaded their audio software, not the VST plugins themselves. And I have them slapped in OBS with some crazy settings. Um, and that is actually what I use right now. <laughs> Dang, I just bought a snowball last night. Oh, dear. Return it. Return it. Snowball has not been a good buy for years and years now. I think I'm going to get that one for now. Glad to help. I actually got my Q2U from your old video. Heck yeah. All right. So... We got a little bit of time left here for today's stream. We can get our music back on. We're not doing anything too per serious. Too per serious? Too super serious. I combine words. We got a couple products to unbox just to take a look at for future content and to have a little bit of fun here. One of them is really exciting, but first we have an actual just Amazon package that was my own orders. So, you know, lol. Uh, but What was the blue mic that was good for ASMR again? Uh, that's the blue Yeti. It wasn't necessarily good for it, it just had the stereo mode that does it. But so does the HyperX Quadcast, which is a far better microphone, as well as... Hello? Uh, the, uh, the blue... the Epos B20 that released recently, and a couple others. Alright, so we have... <laughs> I needed an Insta-Read thermometer, so... You don't need to worry about that. For all my grilling stuff. These are more tech camera video related. I hate these envelopes. They get the like foam stuff everywhere. They are recyclable supposedly though, although most recycling things are a lie. So I bought here a lightning whoa, hello. A lightning adapter lavalier microphone that had tons of reviews on Amazon because I'm working on a kit to follow up my uh all in one Roly cart TikTok setup to do one for mobile and I have a really budget way to do it for your phone mounted to your desk and things like that However This is why I don't cover a lot of these cheap things in actual videos because if I spend weeks making a video on some of this stuff And then release it by time the video goes live So many of these things don't exist anymore. So when I bought this microphone here, which just is a lavalier lapel whatever you call it you know people have different names for it microphone that clips on your shirt and connects through a lightning connector for my iPhone I bought this and it had a ton of it was only 20 bucks affordable cheap but had a ton of reviews and so that's kind of what I lean towards when I get stuff that I want to cover so that I know that a lot of people have already looked at it the product listing doesn't exist anymore it didn't exist the day after I bought it and so reviewing this one in particular is completely pointless because you can't go buy it. And I can't just point, as we discovered with the Inagear versus the Aikidon microphone, we can't even point to similar looking microphones and be like, oh yeah, they're probably the same because they could be completely different. And so I have spent $20 on this microphone to cover it in a video and then I can't really cover it in a video because you can't buy it. And so I'm going to have to go buy another one of them and hope that it doesn't go out of stock or, well, okay, there's a difference between out of stock and the pages getting deleted a lot of these cheap no-name Chinese companies just only have like a hundred a thousand whatever quantity of their product that they have available and then when they run out they just delete their product page and make a new one for whatever new one they're cloning and so I have no way of guaranteeing that whatever else I buy is actually going to be available by the time I finish this video this video could have been done super quickly except for now I have to wait on an entire new microphone to ship and you know Amazon no longer does uh, two-day shipping to me anymore. I don't know if it's because there's like a driver strike going on or what and I'm if there is I'm not going to complain about it, but I live in an area that at one point in time recently was getting same-day shipping And now it's like I order it and I hope it comes next week <laughs> And I am a prime customer <laughs> again If it's a driver issue, I know they're treated like crap and I have no interest in complaining because They deserve much more than they get but it's still obnoxious when I'm trying to make a video and literally product listings disagree or you know disappear. This on the other hand is exciting even though most people don't necessarily 
care about it. This is a variable ND filter, a neutral density filter. You, it's basically sunglasses for uh, your for your camera lenses, so that way when you're outside or in high, you know, bright light shooting scenarios, you can keep your aperture super wide without overexposing your image. Now, my cinema camera has this built in, and I have other ones for certain other lenses. But whenever I go taking my film photography, I don't get the same. Uh, I don't get the same latitude that I would with, or like ability to change things like ISO that I do on digital because film ISO is literally the ISO of the film itself. And so I can overexpose a few steps because film is flexible, but I can only go so far. And so I have entered scenarios where I want to shoot at a wide aperture and it's way too bright and I have to step it down to like F4, F5, or even F8 sometimes. And this will allow me to do that. So you can see right here, if I open it up, you can see my hand through it. If I close it, you cannot. This one has nice, what's called knurling, which is the ridges around it. So it's easy to feel, feel separately from your lens and you can spin it. And this one is super smooth. And this one is literally going on my film camera lenses. So I can take wide aperture film shots in bright sunlight because I'm running into that issue. So I'm super stoked for this because I've been doing a lot of film photography lately. This one is from KNF Concept. Again, it's linked below. It was just kind of one of the cheaper ones I could get because any of the color casts or whatever aren't really going to matter in this context. But Explorographer saying the ice ones are his favorite. I have heard good things about those. I have not tried them yet. Have you tried one of the Movo powered uh, lav mics? Mo Movo LV1? I have the Movo VXR10 or whatever, the little mini shotgun mic. I reviewed that a few years ago and loved it. Oh, so these are like XLR lav mics. No, I haven't messed with these. I'm specifically trying to get one that will plug into an iPhone. Which these will not do without a lot of extra hardware. <laughs> So no, I haven't tried these. I don't really mess with labs for that kind of context a whole lot. Uh, if I'm wearing a lab in like a my high-end professional audio setup, I'm going wireless. I'm not going to strap an XLR cable to me. But I've used like... Oh, you all aren't seeing this. So I'm guessing these are... This is the LV6. I don't see an LV1 right now. Ovo LV... LV8? LV6? So I have used the VXR10 here, the uh, the mini shotguns. I have recommended those. I don't think Amazon wants to show me the LV1. They said, "Oh, they're three point LV1DI." I guess DI would be digital interface. Hey, fifty bucks. You know what? I will try it, so we're going to add that to my cart. I will try it just for its own review, um, but I still need a cheap one that I can recommend for this budget setup. So I do like the direct lightning here. That's perfect. But I do still need like a $15 to $20 lightning lavalier mic that I can recommend for the budget setup. And I'm just going to try a random one and hope that it stays in stock. Here's one, $20. Galvanox. Uh, Movo has, well that's 60. 34. Movo I laugh. Alright Movo. You're getting two of them from me. Movo I laugh. So 35. So that's enough for me to cover like two different price points that I can say, okay, your mileage may vary from there. But that's pretty solid. Alright. We have 10 minutes left for one final product unboxing here. Uh, that's going to be kind of ridiculous because I don't have the space for... I don't know why this box is so big, so... Uh, give me just a sec, I guess. Let's do... Um, I don't know. I'm going to take off my headphones. don't know how exactly I want to do this. Yeah, it, this does not fit. We'll do this instead. Whee! Whee!
Don't play with knives, kids. So much packaging. Why did they give me such a big box? Oh my god. Oh, it's so heavy. Jesus Christ. Mm. And I just gave myself an uppercut with that box and bit my the inside of my mouth in two different places. Like broke the skin. Ha! Huh. On both sides, I now have holes in the inside of my mouth. Those are gonna bleed. That's gonna suck. Okay. Now that I'm done embarrassing myself. We have a laptop. I don't get laptops here in the studio a whole lot. I am super stoked for this. This is an MSI gaming laptop. So this is a higher end laptop than anything I have ever used in my entire life. And it's still too big for the camera. And I am so incredibly stoked to try this out. Do you still have a shotgun mic with the lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter? Ooh, I could do a three mic, mobile mic shot. Uh, the is I will need a three pole to four pole conversion going on here uh, because I have the lightning to 3.5 mil is four pole and the mic is normal, so it may not come through right, but we'll see. All right, we are opening this bad boy up. Ah, I still can't believe I uppercutted myself. Oh, it's a box in a box. You gotta be kidding me. So now that's box three, Epo Zero. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> MSI. I have not used a single product by the company name of Thorn Max, no. All right. Oh dear gosh. <laughs> Move my drink out of the way so we don't cause any spills. Da -da 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 -da! Holy crap, this is quite the presentation, if not a physically abusive one. Oh wow, the laptop is significantly thinner than I expected. So, that's a win. I have no idea if I'm supposed to send this back, so we're just going to keep all the packaging safe and sound. You never know with these things. I do keep, you know, when it's unclear, I get confirmation later and keep the packaging until then, and then I try to keep packaging around in a little while. That is a big, chunky power break. Laptop is more powerful than my gaming PC. Don't spoil it yet. I mean, people seeing the Amazon links will already know, but... Speaking of which, my phone locked, so I don't have Amazon chat up anymore. Amazon! There we go. Thank you for the follow, Raven Darkness. Dementia Way. This thing is like a Ferrari, but it's a gaming laptop. This is nuts. It looks kind of goofy. But also, look how thin this is for a gaming laptop. So, IO is actually pretty stellar right now. Uh, I guess that's the power plug. Yeah, that would be that icon. HDMI, uh, gigabit ethernet. I assume it's not dual gig. It might be. Thunderbolt, mini display port. USB 10 gig, USB 20 gig Type-C, battery indicator, combo headphone jack, Kensington lock, 10 or probably a 5 gig USB A's, and then SD card reader. New mobile editing station for conferences for sure. It'll be a pain in the ass to travel with. So, I hello, people of the internet. Are we alive? 
Hello? Okay, OBS thinks it lost connection to YouTube. I don't know what happened. That was weird. Assuming you get to keep it- yeah, so, uh, I will have to compare how it performs versus the, uh, the, uh, the iPad Pro for editing, because that's significantly lighter, but yeah, this thing is... So this is the MSI Raider GE76 gaming laptop. This is a 17.3 inch gaming laptop. It has an Intel Core i9-11. I'm gonna say this wrong. I'm gonna say it wrong. I gotta pull it up. 11 something... 11980HK, I believe? I believe that is the specific spec. Actually, I have it pulled up. Actually, I have it pulled up right here. Don't be dumb, Meepos. 11870H. Is that the one that I got? I thought I got... Hold up. I have the specific specs of the one that I was sent here. 11980HK, yes, and an RTX 3080 graphics card and a 360 hertz screen. 360 hertz refresh rate. We got this incredible RGB bar on the front. It's already kicking up the fan sound. Don't know if you can hear that. So it's not going to be a quiet beast. 360 hertz, 1080p gaming. A pretty solid feeling keyboard on first impression. We'll see if that holds up. And I believe 32 gigs of RAM. Yeah, 32 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte NVMe. This thing is bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Like I said, this is... The craziest laptop I have ever owned in my life. Well, had in my possession. I don't know if I own it yet. So, we got... 8, th eight cores, 16 threads, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Intel, you know, the built-in graphics on top of the RTX 3080. Now, this is a laptop grade 3080, so it won't perform quite the same, but it does have 16 gigs of VRAM. It's the, uh, the Raider, MSI Raider GE76. It's on the Amazon link in the description. All bonkers, no chonkers. And it does have a webcam. I want to see how the webcam looks. Obviously, you all won't get a full impression, but I can at least give you all my initial thoughts. Probably crap. But. No, I don't want camera to have my location. Oh, dear God. Uh, it's just completely overexposing me. Yeah, that's terrible. There's some sharpness to it though, so maybe if I play around with it, but it's got a lot of noise and I look like completely overexposed. I'll post some pictures in the webcam chat on our Discord at discord.gg slash But yeah, this thing will be the most insane Lamborghini or Ferrari S gaming laptop while still being slim enough to kind of pass as almost like a business laptop kind of thing. And should be incredible for video editing if you want that as well, especially in DaVinci Resolve. This is nuts. And I've never actually used a 360 hertz display. I've used 240 hertz, but not 360 hertz. So I am super stoked to check this out, give it a review, probably a couple different videos talking about the different workflows, such as editing and streaming and gaming. But, oh dear gosh. If you can afford a laptop, you can aff if you can afford that laptop, you can afford a nice camera. Yeah, but I've never understood those arguments because especially even in this scenario, being able to afford a nice camera and being able to use that nice camera in the situation where you're on a laptop are very different things. I have nice cameras, but if I'm on a laptop sitting outside or in an office or something, I want to be able to use the camera that's built into the laptop. That's why it's there. Have you tried the new Elgato webcam? Yeah, I have full coverage of all of Elgato's recent launches up on my YouTube channel, covered very in-depth 
and I'll even have some comparisons soon as my Dell UltraSharp webcam is being delivered today, so I will be able to compare that as well. Uh, but you can check out all of those reviews up on my YouTube channel. I've got the Wave XLR, the new Stream Deck, the new microphone arms, and a giant microphone arm buyer's guide, etc. Alright, thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. We have a new video about the Sony ZV-1 as a webcam coming uh, tomorrow. And I don't exactly know what Friday's video is yet. Um, but like I said, get subscribed for that video next week on getting the best sound out of your microphone for hello cables for streaming i am super stoked about how that one's going to turn out and yeah join us on discord discord.gg slash ebosfox go check out our music at backingtrack.gg if you want to use this backing or this background music for yourself and your streams and videos all right so announcement time before we finish here i'm not saying bye i wanted to i wanted to i wanted to filter out all the people who were going to bounce very quickly announcement time the reason that we're taking a hiatus from AFK chat for a little bit as I am building a new Twitch show. I am still experimenting with different live stream shows and the like. Um, and AFK chat's been going great, so I'm not just killing it off. We're still going to have it. Keeping up with it weekly was a little bit tough because I don't always have individual products that I'm ready to just talk about like this. But I do have plans for a fairly big Twitch show that we actually planned out on Twitch last week or this weekend. Um, that's going to encompass a few different segments that will make it into video. So stream critique is coming back. We're going to have little unboxings and testing out, like testing out the laptop and testing out new streaming gear in real time. Uh, and we're going to have some, some, some really cool stuff, but it's going to be on Twitch. I may multi-stream it to Twitter or something else, but I can't, actually I can't do that. I can only multi-stream the YouTube shows. I may start streaming, what I meant to say is I may start multi-streaming uh, streamer news to Twitter and things like that. But since I am streaming on Twitch and I am a Twitch affiliate and exclu exclu exclusivity, blah, 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 um, this show will specifically be on Twitch. I don't exactly have a day or time yet, but it will most likely be around the 3 p.m. Eastern time slot that I do most of my streams at. Maybe even still on Tuesdays. Not 100% set in stone. Go join our Discord so you can stay updated. But it's going to be awesome, and I am super stoked. And it's going to be over at the retro side of the streaming setup. Because that, that one looks better for this show. So I am beyond stoked. Stream Critique is coming back. So if you want to sign up for Stream Critique for yourself, you can head on over to streamguides.gg slash stream critique. I'll pop that in the YouTube chat and it'll be in our Discord, of course, as well. And yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I'm trying to get this pulled up for you and it's not working. Do, 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 do. No. Stream Critique application. There we go. Whee. Hope you have a wonderful week. Use your Amazon Prime to subscribe over on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash eposvox. And I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, actually, one person asked what laptop to use to edit videos. I don't edit videos on a laptop normally. Uh, I edit on a desktop, a big Threadripper and an RTX setup. Bye. <laughs>